Hey, what's up you guys? Welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be sharing with you how to study and pass the ATIT 6 English and Language Usage section. Now I have been doing kind of a series on how to pass each section of the T6 test. I will be linking all of those videos down below. So today I will be breaking down just generally what the English Language and Usage section looks like on the T test as well as giving a quick overview of the three types of questions that you're going to see on that section and ways that you can study for it and do better on the test. So on the English language and usage section, you are going to have 28 questions and 28 minutes to complete those questions. So that means you have about a minute per question and out of those 28 questions, 24 are going to be scored and four are going to be unscored. Now, just like all the other sections on the T6 test, you aren't going to know which questions are scored or which ones are unscored. So you just want to make sure that you put your very best effort into all the questions. Now on the English language and usage section, there are going to be three types of questions that you'll see. The first type of question is conventions of English. The second type of question is knowledge of the English language. And the third type of question is vocabulary acquisition. So I am going to do a quick overview of each of those three different types of questions and how you can study a little bit better for those types of questions to score better on this section on the test. So first of all, let's talk about the questions that have to do with conventions of the English language. You are going to have nine questions that fall under this category. So basically these types of questions have to do with grammatical aspects of the English language as well as how to organize a sentence and spelling and punctuation. Some of the things that you are going to see in these types of questions are basic sentence structures. So understanding active versus passive voice and different tenses. So like past or past perfect tense or present or, and present perfect tense, as well as the perspective that a writing is coming from. So for example, the first person or the second person or third person. So those are all things that fall under basic sentence structure. You're also going to see some questions that have to do with parts of speech. So you may be familiar with the eight different parts of speech in the English language. These are all important to know and understand. You'll also want to be able to identify split infinitives. In this section, you'll see some questions having to do with subject and verb agreement. So make sure you know how to identify the subject and the verb in a sentence and know if they are in agreement with each other. In this section, you're also going to see questions that have to do with pronoun and antecedent agreement. What that means is a pronoun like he or she, and then agreeing with the noun that goes along with it. And so you'll want to make sure that you know about that as well. And then finally, in this type of question, you're going to see things that have to do with spelling. You'll want to make sure you know about English spelling rules and then common misspellings that you might see in the English language. So that is basically what you're going to see in the section of conventions of the English language. All right, so then the second type of question that you will see is knowledge of language questions. These questions have to do with how to apply English grammar rules and also how to communicate effectively using the correct English grammar, paragraph structure, and correct use of the English language. Some of the questions that you might see that have to do with this category are using pronouns correctly, identifying formal versus informal language, and knowing in what circumstances to use those types of language. So formal versus informal language would be, for example, writing a research paper versus writing a text message or an email. You'll also see double negatives, and so you're going to want to know what that means and how to prevent that in writing and how to correct that. These type of questions might also have to do with sentence structure, and so you may have to edit a sentence, so maybe change the verb or the adjective or condense a sentence to make it more clear. And then finally, you might see questions that have to do with paragraph organization. And so identifying what the main idea of a paragraph is and knowing how to structure a paragraph to communicate a clear idea and to make sure that the paragraph flows smoothly and effectively. 
So finally, the third type of question that you will see on the English language and usage section has to do with vocabulary acquisition. And you will see six questions that have to do with this category. This type of question has to do with you demonstrating that you have a good knowledge of the basics of English vocabulary, as well as knowing how to identify synonyms and antonyms of words, and also how to use context to define words. So a couple types of questions that you may see in this category are questions that have to do with commonly confused words. So you're going to want to know the difference between words that people commonly confuse in the English language. For example, there and there and know the difference and the difference in spelling as well. You'll also want to know how to identify words that you don't know. It's very likely that you are going to be asked questions on some vocabulary that you're not familiar with. Even though I'm a native English speaker, there were several words that I did not know at all on the test. So if you do face questions that you have no idea what they mean, there's two things that can really help you to prepare for this. Number one is to learn common prefixes, root words, and suffixes of the English language. If you have memorized and know most of the basic prefixes and root words and suffixes, and you know their meanings, then when you come to a word that you don't know, you'll often at least be able to identify some of those separate word parts and be able to come to at least a good guess of what the word means. And then the second thing is to use the context that the word is in. So when the TEAS test asks you about a word, they usually have it in a passage or in a sentence. So you can use that passage or sentence that the word is in to give you clues on what that word might mean. So using those two things, knowing the different word parts and what they mean, and then also looking at the context around that vocabulary word will help you to at least narrow down what that word might mean and have a better guess at the definition of the word. Now I'm going to share with you the two books that I used to study for the test as well as the practice tests that I used. If you've seen my other videos on the T6 test, you already have heard about these books. I definitely recommend both of them. My top pick, which you guys maybe have already heard in other videos, is the ATIT's Secret Study Guide. Now this is a comprehensive all-in-one study guide as well as includes practice tests in the back of the book. So on the English language and usage section, they have about 45 pages of super helpful information having to do with what's covered on the test and they include very helpful information. For example, on this page they have spelling rules and so these are all the common spelling words that you should be familiar with. Talk about the parts of speech. They have long lists of commonly misspelled words. So this is very helpful if that's something that you struggle with. They just have so much helpful information in here. And so this just goes on and they have explanations of the verb tenses and a breakdown of all of the different parts of speech. Then they also have a section on punctuation and talking about the correct use of different punctuation. And then they also have capitalization rules and a lot of information on pronouns. They also have things on sentence structure and paragraph structure. So there's just tons of helpful information in here. And then at the back of the book, you have three practice tests as well as an answer key to all of those practice tests that describes exactly how to answer each question and why each answer is correct. And then the other book that I found very helpful was this McGraw-Hill 5 T's practice test book. So it's exactly what it sounds like. It has five practice tests and I found these to be also very similar to the actual test when I took it. Now finally to wrap up, what are some ways to approach the English language and usage questions on the TEAS test when you actually go to take the test? When I took it, I was actually surprised by how difficult the English language and usage section was. I honestly wish that I would have studied a little bit better for it. I think I relied a little bit too heavily on my background in English and I focused a lot more on math and science. I did get a pretty good score on the English section and passed it, which was great, but I wish I could have boosted that score even a little bit more. So all that to say, you might be different from me of course, but don't underestimate this section on the test because it actually is a bit challenging. So when you come to take the test, there's a few things that I found really helpful to answering the question. First of all, when you initially read the question that you read it very carefully and identify exactly what the question is asking for you to do. 
And a lot of these questions on the English section are going to give you a sentence, a paragraph, or even a passage that they want you to read and then identify maybe an element of a sentence or an error that's in the paragraph or passage or how to fix something in that um, sentence or passage. And so you want to make sure that you know exactly what the question is asking you first so that you're not wasting your time doing something that it's not asking you to do. And some of the questions on this section also just have to do with facts. They might not even be a sentence, paragraph, or passage for you to analyze and evaluate. It might just be you remembering a fact. So then once you've identified what the question is asking you, then predict what the answer is going to be, and then look at the multiple choice answers below, and then you want to choose what you believe is the best answer from that multiple choice. So I've talked about this in some of my other videos, but sometimes you might be totally stumped on the answer. And if that is the case, make sure that you don't skip the question. Make sure you always answer a question, even if you're stumped, and just use the process of elimination to eliminate answers that are clearly wrong. And then whatever answers you have left, choose what you think is the best answer. All right, so that is the general breakdown of the English language and usage section on the T6 test and my study tips and the resources that I use to prepare for that section. I'm linking down below some helpful websites that offer more free resources on preparing and studying for this section on the TEAS test. So I hope that was helpful for you. If it was, go ahead and drop a comment below letting me know, and you can go ahead and like this video and subscribe for more content similar to this.